Hi and welcome to the sixth episode of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series. So this episode is on hair loss and nutrition. So many patients ask um, why their hair is suddenly falling out and I guess to answer that question we need to know when it started. Um, sudden hair loss can be the result of so many things but it's important to tell your doctors when it happens um, they may need to log it as an adverse effect to one of the drugs you're taking. Perhaps when you think of hair loss and cancer, you automatically think chemotherapy and certainly drugs like temozolomide, capcitabine used for pancreatic tumours um, can cause thinning. Uh, this occurs in less than one per 10 people. Um, other combinations like 5-FU, dacarbazine and heparubicin uh, can also be an issue and drugs like sunitinib can cause hair thinning too. Um, most patients don't have chemotherapy, um, but most people do have the somatostatin analog treatment. Um, and uh, although there are no um, noted adverse effects during those trials, uh, there are plenty of case reports from patients who have had hair loss um, after stat starting the somatostatin analog treatment. Um, and some people even have to give up the treatment. I know when we did a global survey a few years ago, over 57% of patients reported hair thinning um, once they'd started the somatostatin analogs. However, there is no known mechanism for hair loss caused by these drugs um, in neuroendocrine cancer. It is possibly actually they're not to blame at all uh, for that high percentage of um, reporting hair loss. Um, it may be down to stress of another kind for th things like um, diagnosis can be really stressful obviously um, and surgery soon after diagnosis may be to blame. So stress is a major factor in surgery related hair loss. During stress our bodies shunt nutrients towards our heart, our lungs, our muscles and other vital organs. So as a result our hair may be weakened and in some cases hair follicles stop producing new hair. This is the most common form of hair loss and is typically seen to, in two to three months after a major body stress, including surgery, an illness or significant infection. Hair may fall out of the scalp and you may notice it on your pillow or in the shower or bath um, or on, more on your hairbrush. Scalp hair may appear thinner but it's unusual to see bald spots appearing from this kind of hair loss. Unfortunately all surgery involves some kind of stress so it's important to minimise the extent if possible. So to de-stress, I advise that you set aside some time to relax and exercise as much as possible and is safe to do. I can't promote massage enough. Um, people really benefit from this relaxation during treatment. Just be careful, obviously, with um, surgery and not massaging around any surgical areas. Um, during healing, your body metabolism increases, so you've got increased requirements of protein and zinc and iron, biotin, things like that. Um, limited amounts will be diverted to where they're most needed, so the healing parts, and your hair unfortunately isn't one of those places often. So to reduce the effects of stress on your hair, try to get a good diet and enough nutrients. Um, it depends obviously what surgery you've had done, but supplements and foods rich in uh, zinc, biotin, iron may be of benefit um, to surgery related hair loss, but there's not a huge amount of research in this area at the moment. Many patients are deficient in zinc, um, just to highlight that one, and therefore it's a useful blood test to get done, especially after surgery to the duodenum or upper jejunum. I'll do a separate episode on zinc. So if you have hair loss because you're itching your scalp and weakening the hair follicle and the hair that grows through it, there may be several reasons for this. So firstly, you may be lacking essential fatty acids, which can happen in your endocrine cancer where you're malabsorbing fat and getting this steatorrhea, fatty diarrhea. You can get it as a result of some types of small bowel bypass surgery and as a result of short bowel syndrome. You can get essential fatty acids obviously through your diet, um, a normal diet, but following a low fat diet makes essential fatty acid deficiency more likely. If you have pancreatic exocrine insufficiency you need pancreatic enzyme replacements. But if you don't have enough bowel or the right part of the bowel to absorb these fatty acids once they're released, you may need to actually have 
subcutaneous fatty acids given to you. The other option apparently is to rub sunflower oil into your skin to ensure that you get enough fatty acids into the body. Just a note that medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, which I've talked about before in other episodes, do not contain essential fatty acids. They're just a source of calories for us. Um, other skin conditions due to thyroid conditions can also cause an itchy scalp and hair loss. If you have allergies and eczema, there may be a link to vitamin D deficiency, so make sure that your vitamin D levels are checked. Dermatitis all over the body is also a sign of pellagra, which is nice in deficiency, your vitamin B3. So if you've had uncontrolled carcinoid syndrome for years, you need to speak to your team about niacin replacement. I'll do a separate episode on this too. Um, if your scalp flakes and itches and it's visibly dry from any cause, um, make sure that you use an oil or a moisturiser directly onto the scalp. Don't use a dandruff shampoo, it can make it worse. Make sure you protect your scalp by covering it um, in the sun. Um, make sure that you're not in areas which are too dry. I know heaters can really dry up your scalp. Um, and going from heat to air con all the time um, strips the hair uh, and the scalp of moisture. Try gentle hair products like baby shampoos, um, but you may react, if you've got a sensitive scalp, you may react to some of the chemicals still in these and you may need to swap to an organic formulation. As I said, anti-dandruff shampoos um, may make the problem worse. Um, other causes of hair loss can be due to sudden change in hormone levels, due to surgical removal of ovaries, um, for example, in some kind of gynae neuroendocrine tumours. Um, but make sure whatever the cause that you tell your healthcare team um, so the problem can be properly diagnosed. So that's it for this week. See you next Wednesday for episode 7.